Michelle. Well, I know Michelle by feeling well. I don't bother her the other day. She, she and herself by no means. So, but they just still just going through life. Yeah. She's trying not that I hold her down, but she's got to, she's got to let her body rest to be able to. But anyway, we'll pray for her always. So she won't be here this morning because they're they having to get the pump taken out today because of yesterday is Fourth of July. They usually do it on Saturday, but I think they won't be home until probably after eleven. So they're still home though. Well, yeah, they're still they haven't gone on a vacation or anything. I'm supposed to leave sometime this week. Well, we're gonna pray for them both for that and for her. Anybody else? something in prayer. Father God, we come to you always asking a blessing on Michelle and, and the situation she's in, Lord. We just pray that you'd help her get through the, this uh, cancer and the treatments, Lord, and let her uh, have a blessed life. We just pray that you'd be with them and keep them safe on the highway as they travel for vacation. We don't ask just for her, Lord, and the family. We just we ask for all of those that's a part of your family, Lord, that are on the highways and the byways, that you just keep them safe through the things that's going on in our world. And, and uh, just in the traffic that they have to travel through. We just pray that you'd be with them. Lord, pray that you'd be with us today in the lesson. We pray that you'd let us understand the things you would, but the things that you have touch our hearts and we might be that better Christian than we have been in the past and the future. Lord, we just pray that you'd be with the church, let us grow as you see fit, and we just thank you for all the wonderful things that you do for us on an everyday basis. Lord, be with us and keep us safe, healthy, and happy. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. We're in the lesson five. Saint and the martyrs. <coughs> so, text is Revelation 14, 1 through 20. The key verses mourners here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus in Revelation 14, 12. The son is devotion with salvation in all ages is Romans 4, 1 through 8. And I'm going to read the application and read the devotional. The application student will recognize that God's goal is every in every age is the uh, pro pro proclamation of the gospel so that all who will dwell on the earth can give him glory. All right. We'll stop just a minute. Does anybody feel like this is a blah day? Does it just blah to everybody? I didn't stay up because of fireworks or anything like that, and I've been blah for the last couple of days. So happier here than anywhere else so but I'm a blah today all right so y'all throw rocks at me if you want to all right verse 1 says and on chapter 4 of Romans says what shall we say then that Abraham our father as uh, pertaining to the flesh had found for if Abraham was justified am I reading the right one mm -hmm. yes for if Abraham were justified by works, he hath a whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of de debt. But to him that worketh, worketh not but, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for uh, for righteousness. Even as David also described the blessings of man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. All right. First look. He says, during the earth, earth, earthly ministry, during his earthly ministry, Jesus taught that the salvation of souls of people could be likened to a harvest. This lesson gives us the fulfillment of that illustration. These verses concern the eventual harvest of God. Harvest of God. This is not a harvest of a crop of grain. Instead, it is a harvest of souls, and it gives us a glimpse into the situation during the last days of the tribulation period. It is. 
very important that we remember as we study Revelations that the spiritual laws of God which we learn in the Bible will never uh, cease to operate. The word of God is forever true and it will abide forever. Heaven and earth will pass away but the word of God will not. It's in Luke 21, 33. Jesus says the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. As we learn in Romans 10, uh, 12 through 17, when people in all ages of any nation repent of their sin, sins and place their faith in Jesus, they will be saved. All right. Even in the darkest days of the tribulation period, the plan of salvation will be available if people will follow it. As we have learned in Revelation 7, 14, there will be a great number of souls that will come out of the great, out of the great tribulation. There will also be a great number of saints who are killed during this time because of their testimony. When the worship of the beast is ramped on the earth, many men and women will die merely because they refuse to worship this creature from hell. This kind of unreasonable persecution is not new. We read in Daniel 3, 3, 1 through 27, how an evil ruler commanded men to worship his image under the penalty of being burned alive. We also learn there how uh, faithful men refuse to bow down to this image. This same kind of thing will be repeated during the tribulation. The, uh, that's, that's going on in our world even today. People are persecuted and killed because of their belief in Christ. We don't see it. And uh, uh, everything that in my mind and everything that's going on in our world today makes us think about the things that's happening around about us at that moment in time. And we see there's people being persecuted just because of their beliefs today. I mean, I'm not just saying as, as a Christian, but just in beliefs in, in general. People are persecuted. It's, uh, if you don't think just like somebody else thinks, then they think that this, they got the right to persecute you because of kids in school, you know, people on, on jobs. God gave us a, 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 the, the right as a human being to think and, and to act on those things that we think or right in, in, the, in that way. But some people's right and other people's right are not the same. So we, we see that. And in other countries, they just kill you if you don't believe like they want you to believe or if you believe in anything. And our society has shown that oh, we're just like the rest of the world. We're headed in the same direction of all those other places that would kill somebody that's a Christian. And uh, just because they want to testify that, they're, uh, that Jesus is Lord. So. These uh these things, we, I know he must be talking about uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, my sister's favorite scriptures were those those scriptures. She the little old song that went with that. I don't remember how it goes, but she could sing that little old song every time she she mentioned anything about Shadrach, Meshach, or Abednego. And uh, they were persecuted because they were they were God's people, and uh, because they wouldn't bow, they were thrown into a furnace. But God pulled them out of that furnace. Whole and without any kind of, of uh, hurt on them. We, we think about how we're going to be persecuted because this possibility that could be shortly happening. And if, and if we think about it, who wants to see their family persecuted? I mean, most people would rather they, their, themselves be persecuted than anybody they love. And uh, uh, the thought of being killed because of protecting your family in some way is not, not so far fetched anymore. You know? just not and uh, you see it in the news every day where somebody's got killed because they were trying to hurt somebody else in whatever way that may be so our our, our world today is uh, is no no less the same world that Christ was in when he was on this earth they put him on a cross and they all put us on a cross too so and we're headed that way quickly all right Identified, identified with Christ. First uh, verse in Revelation 14, 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the mount of Sinai, and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their forehead. We need only give one verse there because we wanted to go into depth, I'm sure, about what's going on with these. And I'm going to read what the writer wrote. Keep in mind that John was in heaven watching these things happen on earth. He saw the Lamb of God, who is Jesus, standing on Mount Zion. That is a specific geographical 
taking place on earth. And John also saw the 144,000 that we learned about earlier in uh, chapter 7. There are five important things revealed about this group. First, John heard a new song from, from heaven, music that can be a great encouragement to our souls. And these witnesses left on earth will hear the uh, encouraging song of praise coming from heaven. No doubt these chosen Jews will need this uh, encouragement for the work they have to do during the tribulation times. We have a, we have a future that's going to be uh, pretty bleak for anybody that believes. All right. These 144,000, we talked about them in, in depth on a regular basis. They, uh, a lot of people, there's, there's, a, there's a, a religious group that thinks that there wasn't going to be but 144,000 that were going to heaven. And they have more members, about 10 times that number in their congregations. Can you imagine being one of them thinking, I wonder if I'm the one hundred or one of those 144,000 because there's a million of us. That's, that's terrible. It's, uh, God, God didn't make heaven just big enough for just, just a few. He made heaven big enough for all. And if, and, and if, uh, uh, if, if more came to him, he could expand it just like he did this earth. It's not, it's not something. And, and we know the hell is expanded daily. So it would be <laughs> nice if that heaven was expanded daily, wouldn't it? All right. All uh, right. So he, see, he sees the Lamb of God uh, on, on Mount Sion, and I say that there's a specific place on this earth, that, that center point of all, all our, our uh, belief, that everything else radiates from. God picked that part of the world. I don't know what it is. They can have an equator and whatever lines on the map and say this is the pinpoint center of the earth, but in my mind, Jerusalem is. That's what God picked. That's where God's son was born in that in that region of Asia Minor. That's the center of our spiritual world here on this earth. So, all right. So first, John heard a new song from heaven. Music can be a great encouragement to our souls, and these witnesses left on earth will hear the encouraging song of praise coming from heaven. They're here, and these these men, and I I can give you a little bit more information about them. Is they're young men like. Daniel about his age that are here that they completely give their life over to God and his work they, they to the point when they don't have anything to do with girls or anything else they have completely dedicated their life to, to Jesus Christ and they're preaching to a lost world and they're killed because of those things those, those, that, those that, um, that are preaching those Jewish lineage men young men are going to die uh, for preaching uh, salvation to the lost world. That's what I'm saying. Just coming to that to us anyway. And um, it's, we ought to not look at it as being as bleak as I. It's easy to. I'm always a half full, not not or half empty, not half full. Excuse me. I'm I'm always the one that's looking at the, the worst of things, and and that's a bad time. But the best of things is that God's plan is happening. We look at these things that's going on. God God what God says in His scriptures. Time, the times maybe not given for exactly when it's going to happen, but he tells what's going to happen, and that's happening. It's obvious to look and see that the things that's mentioned in the scriptures are ramping up to this point in time that we're talking about here today. So we know it. And God's word is true, and uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing to know that God's word is, is being played out on this earth just like he says he wants, he wants it to, or the way God wants it to happen, in and in a, in the manner God wants it to happen. And we're shortly, we're shortly to be with our Lord and not have to worry about any of the things we're worried about here. That's hard to push, to, to put on somebody that doesn't believe. They, they can't see those things. They, you know, how, how do you tell somebody you're, you're better off dead than you are alive? That's, that's, a, that's a hard thing for somebody that thinks life is all, especially if this life is the only life. You're dead and you're gone. And you tell them, say, well, this, this life is a short, little, just a blink of an eye when it comes to twinkle of an eye, even uh, of time, when, it comes, when we consider uh, our our eternal dwelling place, and uh, but if you don't believe in the scriptures, how does that make you more comfortable in your life when, than you are today? People are living the life they're living today because they think it's the only life they got, and 
not, they're not worried about the afterlife because they don't believe on afterlife. So those things we can't encourage them in that and in, in believing, telling them those things, especially somebody who's a loved one. You know, it's, it's hard. It's hard to fathom that life is better without that person or seeing that they're gone and not understanding that they're not gone forever, but they are gone to a better place. So, all right, these 144,000 were with Christ and they're still being killed. That, that's how bad this world's going to get. Can you imagine your Christ being there? Our Lord being there. And having these soldiers these the, of the scriptures with him and, and then still just killing them because of what they're preaching. That's a world that's getting this turned completely away from, from, from God and from our Lord and Savior. Second, we are told that these men will be totally uh, devoted to the Lord. They will remain celibate so that they can give themselves totally to their ministry as well relatively short time they have to preach on, preach the gospel. This is not a, a, a condemnation of marriage or of women. Rather, this simply means that marriage is outside God's will for these men. Uh, third, we see that they will follow the Lamb wherever He goes. Their lives are totally dedicated to do the will of God and nothing else will matter to them. Fourth, they are the first fruit of the great uh, harvest of souls. The great the multitude that no man can number in Revelation 7 could be the result of the witnessing of these 144,000. That multitude was said like the sands of the sea. I mean, there's there's going to be so many saved. Why are they saved? They're they're saved from the preaching of these 144,000 that were that were strong enough and had 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 a uh, gospel to preach that they've just done it knowing their lives is in danger can you believe it that they're talking about young men you know we're not talking about adults here we're talking about young men that have got the strength to follow Christ when well, there's a world out there full of adult people that are just don't care not only at this point they don't care no more than to kill a young man that's trying to preach the gospel it's pretty bad all right when they're the first fruit, they're the ones that's going to be martyred. Finally, we learn that these will be truly uh, transformed men. There is no guile in their language. They have been made uh, uh, faultless because of the blood of the Lamb that will be applied to their hearts and souls. Times of great stress tend to reveal our true character. These men were not allowed to blend in with the world or, uh, or be halfway believers. They will minister at, all, at a time of intense trouble and they have to be uh, genuine believers in order to do their uh, wonderful work. And the people that are not, that are just that teeter-tottering on their their, uh, their Christian life, that they're not going to be able to do it because they're not going to have the strength to. They're not going to have that, that fortitude to keep those things from happening. So what they're, they're going to have, a, it's going to be a falling away of them because they're, they're not going to have, they're not going to want to suffer the consequences of, of showing the world that are Christian. How many people in this world right now today that are Christians are not willing to show that they're a Christian because of the, of the people around about them that are going to, to condemn them from whatever uh, direction they're able to do that. And they don't, they don't want that persecution of the people around them to say, uh, 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 Christ is Lord, you know. So it's, it's every day, and you know who, how how can you tell somebody you need you need to preach, you need to tell people about the Lord, and lose your job because of it. These people not only are going to lose their job, they're going to lose their lives. So this um, it's, it'd, be, it'd be wonderful to say that we would have that fortitude to do it when that time comes, but. I don't think that no man's strong in his own will. It's uh, it's it's got to be a God thing. It's got to be it's got to be the Holy Spirit there to strengthen you in those times of trouble. And how do you have those things in your life? Is to try to be as close to Him as you can be. You got you got to be as close to close to God and close to our Lord as you can possibly be, and let the Holy Spirit work in your life. Because there's not very few people on this earth can tell somebody to stick a gun in your head and shoot you. And, and say that I believe in the Lord and they tell him you, if you say that you're going to get shot who, who was able to do that 
can't do it in my own power. I can stand up here and tell you all kind of stuff that I can't do it in my own power. Um, my Lord is going to have to strengthen me when that time comes. And uh, the way he strengthens us in those things is, is by us not denying him. And he says, if you deny me, I'll deny you. And uh, 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 in, that, in that case, guess what? The person ain't going to be strong enough to do so. They're not going to be able to, to not deny Christ. All right. If I identif identified with the beast, and I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven, and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of water. And there, uh, and, and there followed another angel, saying, God of Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, uh, because she made all nations drink of the wrath of the, the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and, and his image and receive the mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mi uh, mixture into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever and they, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his, and his image and whosoever seeth the mark of his, in, his name here is a uh, patience uh, saying here are they that keep the commandment of God and the faith of, of Jesus excuse me we know that there's two marks we talked about them the other day. There's a, there's a mark of, of our God and there's a mark of the beast. And I'm, 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 I mention it every time because uh, Pam is one of those people that she just, if you want her to give, if you want somebody to give you the, the, their honest answer, she's one of them. Her. You ain't got to worry about her putting sugar or coat, coating it or whatever. If you ask her your, her opinion specifically, she gives it to you. And I love her for that because that's just somebody she knows whatever she says to be true. So anyway, I asked her about Robin and her brother if she could watch them starve to death and not take that mark of the beast knowing that she could beat them if, if they were starving to death. And she rightly said that she would not have the power not to take that because she loves her kids, she would do so. And uh, uh, that's the way we're going to be in our life in the same way unless we have the strength to, and that strength coming through Christ and God, our, our God, to resist. And uh, um, without it, we're, we're, we're at lost hope. And it's, uh, we, we have it, it's, it's available to us, but how do we have that in our life? And it's about being closer. And like I say, we have to pray about those things and ask, ask God to strengthen us in those times of trouble. And when he does, then we're able to uh, fight off those fiery darts of the devil, and that's a like fiery dart of the devil that you can't, uh, you can't just brush it off. When you get that mark, that's the end of it. And so I, I, I've looked at it a lot, and I wonder, can somebody be saved after they have the mark? I don't know that that I don't. I think anybody is capable of being saved at any time. So, but here in these scriptures, it says that they have that mark, that they're going through a uh, fiery hell to burn for an eternity so what does a kid do and this this is the thing that gets me what does a kid do that a parent's got that ability to have them marked and and them not have anything to do with it there's a lot of people in this world their parents were not christian people and that are saved and, and make good christians and some of the best christians that's ever been were those people so what happens and maybe this mark is not something that can be given to somebody that's not already reached the age of accountability I don't know. That's the way I look at it. Now, maybe, maybe there's some reason this mark can't be given to a, a young and under that age of accountability. And when they reach that age of accountability, then they're responsible for their own soul. They're responsible for that that uh, that belief in our Lord Savior, or 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 the consequences of not. So maybe that's that's the case. That's just my opinion. That's not something we see in Scripture. But we don't also don't see. How those people in, in Scripture that are that are too young to make that choice of their own will be able to not take that mark or uh, 
are, are, are given that part without them having any say in the matter. So. I do, I do know that if they have that mark, it's saying it's pretty, pretty grim, uh, grim for those people. Who, who would not take it, knowing that their family is suffering? And there's going to be a lot of people that are not going to be believers that are going, they're going to say, hey, either take this mark or die. I mean, they're starved to death. And they're, they don't have Christ on their side. They don't have the Holy Spirit to guide them. Doesn't doesn't have a, a Father in heaven. That are they going to go? Because that's that they know that life's going to be better for them at that point in time because of that thing. That, 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 uh, that life, that good life's not going to last very long, but very short. And our life, and the one that we're going to receive that we were talking about earlier, it's going to last for eternity. And they're going to, they're going to, to give their life over for just a glimpse of, um, of a moment in time and, and lose their eternity. And we're, 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 we need to give up that that we will have to give up that good little bit of time for our return. And we're all going to be able to do it. Uh, so these angels, not, I mentioned Babylon. Babylon here, Babylon has always uh, resembled sin. It was a reflection of sin. Babylon uh, is fallen, meaning that those that have, and Babylon was a powerful, a powerful nation, a powerful people, and, and pretty well just took over that part of the world. They were uh, they were over it. So when that falls, that means that what we've been learning about for the last couple of months about this uh, antichrist being on a throne and and uh, wanting his people wanting those people to worship him as God, that's going to cease when Christ comes back and just and uh, and overthrows him. He's not going to need to do anything but just speak it. He's going to overthrow him. So the powers of this world are going to be overthrown when those things happen. Babylon is no longer going to exist. The uh, Babylon was being rebuilt not very many years back, and uh, I don't. I'm, I'm not somebody that's a historian. I don't. I don't understand those things very much about things. I do know that Babylon was a place, and it's in our Bible, and, and I know that. Uh, uh, I guess Bush or one of our president. I think President Bush is the one that pretty well put a halt to those things not, not, maybe not because he meant to stop that long from being rebuilt but the, the things that occurred at that point in time stopped it because it was uh, what's his name they found in the found in the uh, spider hole they called him over there they, they, there's something that put him right there no, no, it wasn't no, Saul. No, no, it wasn't Saul. Which one? what was the other one the Gulf War the dictator that they took out yeah the dictator Saddam he was rebuilding that city. Y'all know that. So we we, we don't see, we don't see a whole lot of those things, and and I, you know, you can't believe everything you see. So, but some of the, some of the historic uh, historical uh, uh, shows on TV show some of that stuff, and and, and you see pictures of those things. That's how I know. I don't know any other any other way, but. Uh, Babylon was being rebuilt, so I don't know. And it's still part of that's still a, a place over there that we know that Babylon was at. So all right. So Babylon has fallen. It's fallen the great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And we, anytime anybody is uh, uh, taking anything other than God into their life and worshiping that, then then it's then it's cheating on God. All right. And I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord uh, from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest their, from their labors and their work being fallen them. The things that we do for God, the things we do for our Lord and Savior after we was, after we was uh, uh, baptized by the Holy Spirit are things that we're going to be able to take with us. We have, they're going to be our jewels, the things that we have that are precious. Anything else is just worthless so after we after we was baptized a believer not baptized in the pool of, of the, the baptism but baptized by the Holy Spirit the things we do in our life there's either those things that we do for God or those things that we do for self and the things we do for self are worthless everything else we do in our life for God those things we do in our life for God are the things that matter he says I heard 
and I and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. That's man. Can you imagine the uh, these people are being killed, and, and it's and it's, a, it's and we know that a person that dies in the Lord is better off. And I was talking about it earlier. Blessed are those that die here. They're blessed. That's a that's a pretty terrible time, man. When they want us, when you're blessed to be dead rather than alive. It's uh, but we but we under, like I say we understand that this life is short anyway. But the world doesn't understand this. This is yea, said the spirit that they may rest from their labors. When when we leave this world, it's the same case. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not that unhealthy. But there's some that are unhealthy. I see, I seen a guy yesterday. I seen him in town the other day. He's sitting on a curb, and he had on a pair of shorts. This leg was metal. And this leg is normal. So if he had them wearing shorts, I would never even notice the fact. He's sitting on a curb, and I thought, you know, I want to stop and see if this guy needs something. You know, I couldn't have picked him up in my work vehicle, but I could have seen if I could help him with something. And then I realized he was working. He was there tearing down a fence and putting up a new fence for these, these people in Bay City. Can you imagine? A man with that leg, and he was, he was at least my age, out in the hot sun, working, doing doing laboring. And uh, I know so many people out here in this world that are way capable that ain't working. They're not working. They've got two good legs, two good hands, two good arms, two good eyes, two good ears. They're not working. This man working and, and lost his leg. I thought it was a wonderful thing. I thought he was, he was, he was blessed that you know, uh, they helped him with that leg and he could get around like any, like anybody else. But here, these people are going to have to work, and it ain't like they're working for pay. They're not working because because of God's given them uh, 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 ties in the church. It's not because of any other reason than their love for Christ that they're doing what they're doing. And they're going to be martyred for those things. Right. Revelation 14, 14 through 20. And, and I looked and beheld a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his uh, hand a uh, uh, sharp sickle. And another angel came out of, the, out of the temples, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle. And reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. We I stopped long enough to say this. There is going to be a point in time when those that are, that are not wanting to be saved, those that are not going to be saved, is going to be known. It's not, there's no, there's going to be a clear line between those that are saved and those that are lost. We we got those things uh, obvious when the mark of the mark of our God and the mark of the beast. When that happens, then it's, it's not going to be we'll worry about if there's a goat or a sheep. You know, if it's that obvious, there's going to be that obvious of a difference. Christ is going to come, and He's going to take those that are that are uh, His out of this world. But also, He's going to take those that are Satan's out of this world. All right. Another angel came out of the temple, crying with a uh, loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come. For thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out from the temple with, with, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that, that had the sickle, a sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sickle. Thrust in thy uh, sharp sickle and gather the uh, cluster of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully, uh, fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle and, uh, to the earth and, uh, and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into a great wine press of the wrath of God. And the, the wine press was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the wine press even unto the horse's bridle by the space of a thousand six hundred and four. Uh, that's I don't know what those measurements is, but the writer does, and I'm gonna read what he says here, so we'll, we'll have that. 
A voice from heaven uh, then standing, uh, stated another eternal truth and added one very interesting piece of information. Those who die in the Lord have always been blessed and their works have always followed them and eternal reward. Like the gospel proclaimed uh, by the first angel, this is an eternal truth that need, needs to be affirmed again and again in a time of great trouble. But I think it needs to be now. Those things that the Lord, it should be proclaimed. People ought to be running to the church because of things going on in our world right now. There's never been a time like this one. And people, and I, I can agree with that because you hear it all the time. There's never been a time like this one. Because in times of trouble in the past, where do people go? They came back to God. And this time's of trouble, and I hope it's over. I hope it's that, that great awakening again. I do, and I pray for it because I've always said that I do think the United States would be one of those powers that gave their rights to this Antichrist to, to rule and reign over us because it was a Christian nation. We can, we can be assured that uh, we're not that same nation. We're not. So I pray that this, this is awakening. God has give, given this to us as an awakening that we need to come back to the Lord. And, there, and those that are, at least in, and I, and I, I'm, I, I don't, for the whole world, but I don't want to live in a country or a world that would not have God in it. I don't. So, so, and we see what it is. We see what the world's going. We got glimpses of what the world's going to be without Him. We haven't, we haven't even got there yet. It's all right. Then a uh, prophecy Jesus gave at the beginning of His ministry, when He began to teach in parables, will be fulfilled. This is recorded in Matthew thirteen twenty four through thirty and thirty six through forty three. In that parable, the uh, servants asked if they should remove the th uh, tares that were sown among the wheat. Jesus told them to leave the uh, field alone and that the, the tares would be dwe uh, dealt with at the time of the harvest. This passage is about an, an eventual harvest of souls. And, th and this is, anybody's found in the garden understands it or got flower beds, they, they understand it. We don't, we don't normally leave the weeds grow up in the things that we, that we uh, want to have for those things, but in this this case, when they when they planted the wheat or planted the rye or whatever it was they was planting, the things that was mixed in with it looked like the same plant. It looked like it. so. We see Tim can tell grasses apart. <coughs> you know, I can't I can't tell uh, Argent, Argentina from uh, uh, what's that? What's the two hayas? Pensacola. Argentina from Pensacola. They, there's a little, little bit different in the leaf and, and the, the one seeds. Just like a month out of year, the rest of the other seeds are months out of year. I don't know, but anyway, I can't tell, and um, they couldn't tell those things that was in the crop either. But when they did get big enough, they could. They went to the the, the owner of the crop, of the field, and said, "Hey, we got these weeds in the in the crop. We got these tares in the crop. Should we go pull them out?" And, and Christ tells them in, in this in this parable that by pulling the the, the tares out it would hurt the the ones that were not tares, the good plants. This is a pretty bad thing. When you pull out all the pull out the weeds, then it would hurt the whole. And uh, we're talking about societies. It would hurt the whole, and uh, it would. When 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 we're raptured out of this world, can you imagine what's going to be left? Those that, that won't be raptured out, the ones that be here. The, the, if the, when when the, when the, and I won't want to say good, but when when the the, the ripe fruit. The right fruit or the right wheat is pulled out, and all the tares is left. That's what's happening in a lot of communities. People don't want to live in a community where there's a bunch of tares because the tares will just hurt themselves, right? So, anyway, so they're moving out, and it's happening. So, all right. <clears throat> Two harvests are, are mentioned there is a harvest of wheat and a harvest of grapes that are uh, trod in wine. In, in the wine. Both of these are uh, symbols of the fact that in due time God will hold men accountable for their uh, choices. The law of the harvest is one of God's uh, unchangeable spiritual truths that mentioned in the earlier uh, see, uh, Galatians 6, 7, and 8. The only way to avoid an evil harvest is to sow to the uh, spirit and not to the flesh. We cannot, we cannot sow to the flesh and then 
pray for a crop failure. This is a terrible picture. The great battle that is uh, pictured here will result in human uh, blood filling a valley 600 furlongs to the depth, 1600 furlongs long to the depth of, uh, of the bridle of a horse. This would be about 200 miles long and five foot deep. Sadly, if we will not hear the voice of the grace of God, then we must hear the voice of, of, of his wrath. All right. It's a, you know, uh, it's kind of hard to believe. That's a horror story. That's, a, that's it's, just, it's, it's hard to believe that that could happen to that, to that extent. That people would, would die in that way rather than, rather than uh, repent. As we consider these remarkable, uh, remarkable scenes, we must remember that they, that beyond these scenes of ju judgment, beyond the trouble described, description, trouble descriptions of what is to come upon the earth and, and beyond uh, the blood, the slaughter, and the darkness, and the uh, heartache, and the sorrows. And, misery when the land will be covered with blood for miles and miles there is a new day dawning the new day will be uh, wonderful this is the time that the prophet described centuries before after the time of Jacob's trouble there will be a wonderful time when Israel will blossom and, and like a beautiful vine spread into uh, branches throughout the whole earth the Messiah Jesus will reign over all the people of the whole world children of God will rule, rule and reign with him for a thousand wonderful, wonderful and peaceful years. This is the ultimate dream that men have dreamed for, for, of for centuries. This is the future, not only for God's children, but for everyone on earth. It's, uh, there's going to be a time that, that there's going to be still people here that have not accepted Christ as Savior. Uh, even during that thousand year millennial reign, there's going to be people saved. But like the United States has been for the last 200 plus years with everything they need, with everything they want, just beyond, beyond measure, we've been blessed in our country that to the point that people don't look to God for those things. They think they can just get them on their own. So, and I say that in the you know, easiest way to put it, as I understand it, that we've just been fat on the, the, the land and, and uh, our government and now it's, uh, it's imploding because of those things. If you can just have things easy as they come, they would, people just want them easier and easier and easier to the point that we're imploding because of that. All right. I can't imagine the day when this when this uh, is going to be, but I do know that those that are, those that are in the grave is except for Christ the Savior are coming back with him. We're going to be here on this earth in a thousand-year millennial reign as a as, uh, uh, Helpers to our Lord to help him in whatever he wants. This uh, we're going to be a part of it. So we're looking at our future. So, all right. Has anybody got anything? Everybody all that quiet. See, I'm feeling better now. <laughs> like I say, it's it's hard to see the the blessing in things, especially if you don't believe. This uh, I'm, I'm pessimistic. I, I do see the blessing though because I know my Lord is is, uh, is going to have me where he's at and uh, no matter if I'm, I'm uh, raptured out of this world or if I'm dead in the grave or I'm, I'm in that tribulation period we don't understand when that may happen that God has got my best interest at heart so amen uh, let's pray and dismiss Father God we thank you for this wonderful lesson Lord and I pray for those that are to be a part of this uh, uh, this time of reaping in this world, Lord, we, we pray that, that our loved ones, Lord, would, would come to you before us uh, uh, ever gets to this point in time. But we, we pray that whatever means is necessary to get them to, to accept your Son as Savior, Lord, that those things would be done and know that their soul is secure in you. We just pray that you'd be with all those that support this church, Lord. We thank you for our brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray that we'd be able to witness for you uh, uh, when we're not here and uh, part of the congregation, but in the world that we have to live in, Lord, we just pray that you give us a word to say that those around about us might understand that they're in need of a Savior. We pray that you be with all those who need our prayers and the mission on the prayer list in the next hour, and we thank you for all you do for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.